Hi everyone, welcome to Join Coder. In today's video, I'm going to show you some features from the Pause Admin panel. Before we begin, if you haven't seen my previous video, I already covered features like products, categories, tax settings, and discount settings. So make sure to check that out. All right, let's get into today's topic, purchase management features for admin role. First, let's take a look at the supplier feature. As you can see, here's the supplier list. It shows the supplier name, contact, address, and status, whether they're active or inactive. Now, let's go ahead and add a new supplier. You just fill in the supplier name, contact, address, and choose the status. Once you hit save, the supplier will appear in the list. If you click edit, you'll see all the saved info. I've also added fields for due amount and paid amount, which I'll explain in just a moment. Now I'm going to mark the supplier as an active and click update. If the paid amount isn't filled in, I need to enter zero before. Updating again. Here you see status is inactive. I'll keep the status as active because I'll use the supplier in the next feature. If I try to delete, it asks if I'm sure, just to avoid any mistakes. I don't want to delete it, so I'll go ahead and cancel. I can also search for suppliers by name. For example, let me search Mr. Alex, and there we go. Next, let's move on to the purchase information section. When I add an ingredient, it shows up in the purchase items list. Let's add an item, say, coffee. I'll select the unit kilogram or package, enter the quantity and cost price, then click Add Item. The item appears in the list, and the system automatically calculates the total price. If I want to remove any item, I can do that from the Actions section. I'll go ahead and add a few more ingredients now. You'll see the ingredient info, total price and action buttons here in the payment section. Once the items are added, you can select the supplier from the dropdown. The total amount is auto-calculated and shown here. Then, you can enter the paid amount. For example, if I pay 51000 it's considered paid. If I pay 21000 it's marked as partial, and if I don't pay anything, it's marked as due. Based on the amount, just select the appropriate radio button, paid, partial, or due, and then save the purchase. After saving, if I want to update or check how much I need to pay a supplier, I just go back to the supplier info, click edit, and I can see the due amount calculated automatically. Let's say I want to make a partial payment of 20000 I just enter the amount and click Update Info. One more important note, if there's still due amount, I can't mark the supplier as an active. The due amount is updated now. I will go ahead and pay the rest. And update it again. Now let's check. Since the due amount is zero, I can mark it as inactive. To check the reports related to purchases, I go to the Summary Report section. You can filter reports by date. For example, from the 1st of April to 22. And it will show the summary. You can see the info here. 
total purchase, paid amount, due amount, date, and purchase status. If there's still some due, the status will show as due. If I want more details, I can switch to detailed view. Select the date range again. and see everything related to the purchase, like ingredient details, quantity, cost, and total. And like always, if I need to, I can explore everything to Excel. Okay, that's it for the purchase management features related to suppliers. Now let's take a quick look at the order features. When there's a new order, you'll see a notification here, and you will see like order code, date, status, and actions. If you want to see full details, just click View. You will find all the info here, including images, product names, prices, quantities, sizes, and order type. This is for admin view only. Admins cannot manage orders directly from here. But if the admin wants to view the invoice for any order, they can simply enter the order code and click Search. The invoice includes the cashier ID, date and time, order code, payment type, for example, cash, and detailed order info like product name, quantity, price, discount. In the previous video, I explained how discounts work and how to add rates to the items. I also covered tax settings, so feel free to check that out if you're interested. Now, let's continue. It also automatically calculates the tax and shows the net amount. For example, if the total is 6,930 and I paid 7,000, the system will calculate the change as 70 automatically. If I want to print the invoice, I can just click the print button. This is the same layout as the payment slip and it'll print out when the printer is connected. That's all for today's video. In the next one, I will be showing the features available for cashier roles. So make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.